Good and you. Welcome back to New Hampshire Vintage. My name is Wyatt and today we're not working on this sled. We're working on that sled. This is a buddy of mine sled. It's a little too fancy and new for me, but definitely cool looking. Anyways, we have a lot of work to do, so let's get started. I'm in the process of moving this sled over to this spot so we can start working. I just want to bring this up. There is no rear bumper on this guy. How do I pick it up to put it on the dolly? I don't know. Very inconvenient. Whew. I gotta invest in a uh, actual like big dolly to move these things around instead of using these rollers all the time. Anyways, uh, this is part two of the Polaris ND 440. And in part one, we dug this thing out and brought it in, it was running kinda, not well. We cleaned up the carbs, which one of the jets was just completely missing out of it or it was in the bowl. We loosened up the steering, it was super tight. And we got a new windshield and we actually got a brake set up for it. Uh, the other one was completely seized. So we had that off and I picked this one up off eBay and got that all installed and a few other little odds and ends that I forget. It's been a few weeks. Anyway, we took it around the house and it started bogging after, I don't know, two minutes of riding. I put some spray down by the clutch and it killed the engine. Which, I, I don't know, I had mixed feelings about because I thought if crank seals are going and you put anything, you know, wicked flammable, it revs up instead of bogs down, but you guys can correct me in the comments why. So I got crank seals, so we're gonna take this motor out today and crack it open. And hopefully the sled can be running and riding just in time for spring, so I won't be able to sell it till the fall. Perfect. <laughs> so let's open up this hood and I'm gonna show you guys. We're missing the carbs and the fuel pump. The reason why, I got the carbs right here, right next to my cookies. My buddy sled, we nickname Clots. That needed jets and the ones that were on it were way too big. I knew this sled ran good before it bogged down. So we took the jets out of this one, threw it in there. So we could have it up and riding for a weekend event. I did order jets. I stuck them in here. Uh, there they are, which are 185s, which seem to work really good. So I'm just gonna throw those back in the carbs. Also fuel pumps missing, that's in the box. I put a new fuel pump on to see if that was the problem when in the last video, but that didn't seem to solve the issue. So I'm gonna put the original fuel pump back on and keep that new one as a spare. And for obvious reasons, cause I'm gonna to try to sell the sled after. And if the other one's good, then might as well not replace it. So what we need to do, I already have the carbs off, which is good. I'm gonna stick, put this stuff off, put this stuff off to the side violently. We got two bolts there. And we got two harder to reach bolts right back, right back there. So I'm gonna stick you guys on the stand, do a quick time lapse, and I'm gonna get these bolts undone. We also need to undo those two springs. And this exhaust is actually just on there by these three springs. And this hood is actually held on by that exhaust. So I gotta take that off and secure that so we don't 
crack that windshield like we have twice already. So let's get started. All right, we got that out of the way. And now let me just grab a ratchet, undo these two, as well as undoing this little bit of wiring, which isn't a big deal. These things are actually pretty easy to come out. And hopefully me alone can lift this engine out and onto the bench. <sighs> the uh, not if you guys care is a 14 millimeter. Now the part I've been dreading, getting, getting those two bolts out. Let's see if that's in, okay, that's not really that much in the way. All right. So this top one is a 16 millimeter, the actual bolt itself. And then underneath, I believe, was a 17. Don't quote me on that. I'll find out. But I know it wasn't a 16 on the bottom nut. I believe it was a 17, maybe an 18, because I remember taking a long time trying to figure out why it wasn't coming out. And that was the reason. Now, I think if I remember, I took out that tie rod, too. I believe I did. So let me take that off as well. So I'm going to get the exhaust off first. So it gives me a little more room. Should be wearing safety glasses when you deal with springs. You could always spring back in your eye. I just safety squint, kind of safety look away. There we go. Oh, come on. Yep, that's the reason why. It comes out and just goes. Yep, that's loose. All right, much more room. So now, I could take the exhaust manifold off, but I don't really want to. It's on there pretty good, and usually whenever you take those things off and put them back on, they always seem to leak. I don't know why. It's just one of those things. So, wow, where did that spring go? Is that it? No. Oh, yeah, that it? No, that's definitely not it. Where did that thing go? <laughs> well, I guess we'll find it when we get the engine out. All right. So I'm going to try to get this tie rod. Let's see if you guys can see. Zoom you guys in. There we go. I'm going to try to get this tie rod up and at least out of the way. That can give me, I don't know why the wrench is on that tie rod. But I'm going to try to get this one out of the way. Then I can get underneath where I need to access the bottom nut for these two. Luckily, I had this thing off before, so they shouldn't be too, too, like, seized on there like they were in the beginning. So let's get that off and 
try to access that. Hopefully that's a good angle for you guys to watch me struggle with this. All right, so I know the top is a 16. Then the bottom, I, know, I don't think is a 16 if I remember right. Try 17 here. Okay. It is not a 17. So let's try an 18. Which I think, if I remember right. That's what it is. Okay. All right, that's one out. And I think that was the easier one. This one's a little bit harder. Let's try to get this guy, if I remember. I had it. Okay. All right, hard part's over. So now we need to just uh, finish taking off the electricals and theoretically it should slip out and then I can just get that belt around the primary and we can get this behemoth out of here. At least it's not like a 600 triple or I want to find one of those though eventually, maybe next year. All right. So I forgot to turn my mic on. Seems to be a theme for this channel is having mic problems. So I wanted to show how much of a pain that oil pump cable is. It took me like 10 minutes just to try to get that little tiny nut off with a 10 millimeter wrench being on. I had to put a wrench on the top and then a wrench underneath. And oh my God, I just had to show you guys and vent a little bit because I was so frustrated about that. All right, we'll carry on. All right, I got the belt off, speedo cable that didn't work. And I think everything else that little odds and ends that are unhooked electrical wise. Oh, the uh, uh, the uh, pull, pull cord, I gotta take that off. All right, thank you guys for reminding me about the uh, pull cord. So that's off. So now let's break our back and get this thing out of here. Oh, okay. How should I do this? I guess there's really no other way. Just get in here and go. Okay. All right. 
Okay, we got this guy onto the bench. I'm just gonna pop those off. I'm gonna take these spark plugs out just so I don't break them. They are brand new. So we'll pull these out, put some blocks down, flip her over, and everything we gotta access is on the underneath. Okay, so now we gotta get this plate off. Just one, two, three, four bolts. And then we can get to the case underneath, which we will have to split right there. And we'll have to pull this side cover off as well. So let me actually take that off first. And then, yeah, I'll take that off first. And then we could actually get, and then we can split this whole thing. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's like seven bolts here and that takes off the uh, cover. Oh, these are definitely tight. It seems to haven't been off in a while. having wicked deja vu. I actually had, I didn't film it because it only took me 10 minutes, but I actually had to replace the pull cord on my maroon ND440. That's somewhere over there in the corner. And I tell you what, this is a lot easier doing with the engine completely out of the sled than the, sled, the engine being in the sled. Should be using my driver, it'd be a lot quicker, but I don't know why. I just, I like using hand tools, working on engines and stuff. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but I don't know. You just get kind of a feel of everything and you can feel if the bolt's gonna snap or, I don't know. I just prefer it this kind of old fashioned way. Just you're more hands on, no pun intended. Zoom you guys in here a little bit. So that's underneath. Definitely a little bit of corrosion. Maybe mice was up there at some point. But it looks pretty clean. When I did the 440, this was completely caked with a mouse nest and I didn't even notice it for, I've had that sled what? Three years now, four years, I forget. So I was running it for three, four years with a mouse nest in there. That's definitely good for your motor to keep cool. But anyways, I got that cleaned out on the other sled and this one actually looks pretty good. So every now and then, even if you keep your sled indoors or it looks really clean, take your cover off and just make sure everything's open in there so your sled can breathe. All right, now that that's off, let's uh, tip this thing over and we'll get underneath it. So now we got one, two, three, four, bolts to take off. I do not know what size they are. What definitely is, oh my God. <laughs> I need a bigger. There we go. Brute force, I like it. Some of these are so on there. This uh, hammer has seen some use. Well, I got it in my hand, might as well do the second one. There we go. I don't know, this side of the plate faces towards the exhaust manifold, so I don't have it 
backwards when I put everything back together. I do like these icon ratchets, but they do sound like they fall, they're falling apart. I don't care who you are. Sour Patch Blue Raspberry. Whoever uh, came up with this idea to have only blue is the best. As I mow down Sour Patch Kids. Next, before we split the case, obviously we want to take off the primary. So I got my impact gun here. I do not have an impact socket this size. You really should use impact sockets. This one might break, I'm not sure. But I gotta get the bolt out and then we gotta drive down to my buddy's uh, shop and he should have a clutch, to, uh, clutch tool to get this thing backed out. I know there's some tips and tricks you can use, but I'd rather just get the tool and do that. I gotta order some. Uh, if we're gonna start doing this a lot more, yeah. All right, let's get this off real fast. So what was a split second for you was about two hours for me. <laughs> so where do I start? All right. So my buddy Eric gave me this tool. We thought it would work, it didn't. So I went to the local power sports store, grabbed this clutch puller tool, which is supposed to be for a 97 to 99 Polaris primary, which this is a 97, too small. So, so I went back to the power sports store, picked up a bigger one, but it was way too long. So I ended up shortening it. So now it goes in, it hits, and we should have it to work. So I'm gonna put a little grease on the threads, put a little grease at the end, and let's see if we can get this primary off. I'm stupid and I forgot to hit record, but with my tool that I had to alter a little bit, it did pop off. So just picture the animation of me. Hey, okay. All right. So now that we got that off, I'm gonna spin this guy and we're gonna now start taking head bolts off. So let's start with that. Okay, see if you can hear this. There's a little burst of air I can hear coming out of there and also look at how grimy that is. So definitely, definitely, yeah, let me zoom in. Yeah, I think she's leaking. Now that that's good, we need to zoom you back out. And we need to take off, we need to take off that little oil pump line and this little oil pump line, get those guys off and then I gotta do a little bit of research. I don't know if I'm gonna do the other side or not. If I do, I think I need to take, I think I need to take this guy off. So let me see what's going on with that and we'll get back to you. Like I said, it's my first time doing this. So on this kind of motor, I never really done one on a 440 Polaris Fuji Moda. So, so it's been a couple days and on this channel, I'm not afraid to admit mistakes that I made as well as show my stupidity. That's how we learn. So let me bring you in and show you a mistake I made so you guys don't make this mistake if you're ever taken apart 
a Fuji engine, especially the 440. So let me bring you in and I'm going to show you what happened. Now I'm sure some of you experts probably already know what happens. On the clutch side, no problem. I took that off. You can see the crank seal's already out. And I wanted just to replace that side, but I did have two seals. So I was like, you know what? Might as well do the stator side as well, or the magneto side. I took off all the bolts and I go to peel it off. I just thought it was just the RTV being a little stuck. No, you need to take off the magneto. And the reason why is I broke the plate. So there's a screw hole there and a screw hole there. One's on one half, one's on the other. I thought it was just two screws on one side and this could just come off while keeping that on. I was wrong. So you have to take this off or just unscrew it to get this piece off. And I learned that now. Luckily, I have another. So, yeah, you can see where the tabs that I broke on that one, that's back in. So I just wanted to show that. And now we can keep going. You can see the, uh, the uh, crank seal or the seals out of that one, that side. So now I can, I'll take this back off, clean up the whole surface, re-RTV it put everything back together and we should be able to proceed with putting the engine back in the sled. So I ended up putting my mic a couple feet away from me and you couldn't hear me in this segment. Of course, audio problems on this channel. But look at how dirty that bearing is. Definitely was leaking. On the other side, the bearing's not as bad. A little bit of dirt, but I don't know. I don't know if that seal was leaking or not, but good to replace it anyways. Lower end was actually pretty clean. There was a couple little heat spots that I could see, like right there. But otherwise, wasn't too bad. I think this is when the dogs came in to say hi. Hi, right, buddy. So I just wanted to show you again those heat marks. I don't know if that's normal that they kind of do that after a while or if it got hot at one point. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments if you guys know. They don't look too, too bad. It's just those two marks on each side. You can see there's the other side. But I wasn't fully sure. So... We're now going to grease up the crank seals, clean up the RTV, and throw them in. I greased the inner diameter a little bit, put a little bit of a dab on the outside of RTV. So I did that on that side as well as this side. I'm just letting the RTV dry for a minute or two, like the directions say. And I'm going to put the two halves back together. Hopefully this solves that problem. Or maybe I just screwed it up. We'll see. Okay. Easy now. All right, I got my torque wrench. Online it says these two outer ones need to be brought up to 25 foot-pounds, and these smaller ones need to be at 18 foot-pounds. So 
I'm gonna do crisscross pattern, just slowly make my way out. I do have them all in, but they are still, you can see they're still loose, finger tight. And yeah, hopefully that solves the problem on this. So let me uh, torque these down and then we can get clutches back on, stator back on and go from there. So everything's still spinning, so that's good. So let's torque these things down. All right, we're all torqued down. Actually looks pretty good. Everything moves freely. Definitely uh, feels like a lot tighter compression already. So now let's focus on the magneto side. Bring you guys down. We got a screw hole there and a screw hole there. Going to throw our plug and whatnot through. Our other plug through. As you can see, Okay. Looks pretty good to me. Might need to be adjusted a little bit. You have a little bit of play, but we'll try that first. See what that does. Okay, I got all this put back together and moving very smoothly. So now we're gonna drop our screwdrivers and we are going to connect these little oil lines back up. But I'm gonna replace these with a new one. passages so that should be good and now we'll put on the clutch okay we have the engine all put back together we got the recoil all put back clutch is all tightened up and on there so now Let's break our backs and we'll put it back in the sled for, what is this, the third time? I don't remember.
Okay, I have the carbs ready to go. I put those 185 jets in that I originally took out of them to throw in that sled, but I just ordered another set. I got this motor all bolted down. I checked for spark real quick. I have good spark, so that new magneto we put in, because I broke the last one, because I'm stupid, works good. Wiring's all hooked up. The recoil cable's all hooked up. Pull, pull cable. So now I just gotta hook up the fuel pump, some extra gas lines, the oil lines hooked back up, and we will give this thing a start. So let me just throw those carbs on and hook up the lines, and let's try this thing out. I theoretically should have everything put back together. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of two-stroke here, Throw it in the car. I can. And let's just try to give her a pull. In there so as you heard she runs i need to adjust the idle a little bit and a few other little tiny things i am going to put you guys on charge for a second and while you guys are charging i'll dial this in a little bit better and then we'll take this out back while we still have a little bit of snow Seems the crank seals fixed the problem. It still has a slight bog taking off. That's every now and then, which I think is just a little bit of carb tuning I need to keep doing. But otherwise, she rips. Is it perfect? No. But for for me fixing it up, getting her running better than it is, you know, she 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 does pretty good. Be a perfect ice fishing sled, honestly. I just want to thank everybody for sticking through this video and also watching all the videos I put out. It really means a lot to me. We're almost at 430 subscribers, which is unreal. So thank you. And you know, what do you guys want to see next? That's the next question. Uh, spring's around the corner here now. We have snow melting. I think sled season, unfortunately, is coming to a close. And I'm just trying to think what we should work on. It would be a three-wheeler maybe, or a cool old four-wheeler, or a dirt bike, or maybe we can get into a vehicle. I don't know. Well, 
just want to thank everybody for subscribing and watching and liking and all the things. So hopefully see you in a few days. Oh, let's see if we can fire this thing right up. Oh.